Our education system is limping, shriveling many a young life as it hobbles along. Thus, those among us who manage to obtain tertiary qualifications are either lucky or brilliant or hardworking or all of the above. It is in that context that we wish to congratulate those who are graduating today together with their proud parents and relatives. My gratitude to the University of KwaZulu-Natal for the honorary doctorate and the privilege of addressing this august gathering. The only problem is that they have chosen a very boring person who seems incapable of talking about anything else except innovation, innovation, and more innovation. It is almost as boring as a preacher who reads the same text week in and week out and delivers the same sermon. Of course, the telling question is whether the boring sermon helps people to go to heaven or sends them to slumberland. The point is that I do not think we dream enough as a nation. Yes, we do dream a little, but nowhere near enough. And you are not or you are what you dream. No dreams, no movement, no progress. A few years back, we learned that the National Aeronautic and Space Administration, or NASA for short, were considering explore, exploring deep space, sending spacecrafts to Mars and possibly to other planets. We dreamed we could be their partners by building tracking stations in our Karoo so that when their spacecrafts travel in our advantage area, we could log onto them and relay the relevant information to NASA. With its clear skies and almost non-existent light and electronic pollution, the Karoo is well suited for that purpose. But in the course of our investigations, we stumbled upon information that the World Astronomical Community was planning to build the biggest, most powerful, and sophisticated radio telescope ever, namely the Square Kilometer Telescope. We decided to bid to host it, it using the same Karoo as our asset. We assembled a team of South African scientists and engineers to prepare the bid, and we won. Now, our scientists and engineers are collaborating with their colleagues from all over the world in the design and construction of the dishes, the installation, and management of the supercomputers to carry the, the largest volumes of data from Carnarvon in Northern Cape to Cape Town from where it will be distributed to all parts of the world. We dared to dream and we won. We asked ourselves why, after so many decades of assembling cars, we still do not have an indigenous South African car one with our own intellectual property. Are we intrinsically incapable of developing one? Some men and women put their hands up. They said South Africa can successfully enter the automobile industry through emerging technologies, such as battery-operated vehicles or fuel cell technologies. We gave them the resources, and the result, the result was the jewel which was the most beautiful electrical car at the Paris Motor Show where it was launched in 2008. But alas, we have stopped dreaming. The jewel will not run on our streets and highways. We have dropped it. In a few years' time, we will be assembling electric cars in our country for other nations. They will not contain any of our intellectual property. The European Union is investing serious amounts of euros in their car manufacturing companies to develop electric cars for reasons ranging from global change to the escalating costs of oil. Are we just content with building highways and quarreling about potholes and e-tolls than about building vehicles that will run on those roads. I own 
together with many other South Africans, an iPhone 5, the ultimate standard in touchscreen phone technologies. It's a wonderful and enjoyable gadget, but why can't we have a South African smartphone? The Koreans, through their Samsung Galaxy 4, are giving Apple, the makers of the iPhone, a run for their money. If the Koreans can do it, why can't we? Are we content with just dreaming about having the latest smartphones and not about making them? Even if not a smartphone, why can't we just think of making an ordinary phone for a start? We are the third most biodiverse country in the world. Can't we dream of exploiting this huge diversity in our plant species to develop a pharmaceutical industry that could contribute to the good health of humanity? In addition to medicines, we may also produce other chemicals that could contribute towards the growth of our economy and our GDP. Why not? Why don't we dream big? We are richly endowed with minerals and plant species. We have the scientists and the engineers with the skills to transform us into the so-called knowledge economy so that we no longer just dig holes in the ground, take out the minerals and send them elsewhere in the world to make the cars and the cell phones that we love so much. So that we no longer just look after plants and animals but leave the turning of those into sophisticated goods to others. Our scientists and engineers have demonstrated with the JUUL, with the SKA, with the Southern African Large Telescope, with the photovoltaic breakthrough, with the splitting of the atom, with the development of lithium batteries technologies and other such ventures that, given the chance, they can be just as good as their counterparts elsewhere in the world. We just need to give them the challenges, the opportunity and resources to tackle them. Today, at the University of KwaZulu-Natal, we are graduating more scientists and engineers. The other 22 universities in our country are doing the same. These institutions did that in the past and they will, do, they will be doing that for many years to come. But apart from the mundane, what challenges is the country giving its young scientists and engineers? Beyond just saying, go out, find a job and earn a living, as of course they must, are they being asked to be part of any dream? And dreams are highly contagious. When we start dreaming big, we might just infect our children and their teachers, and by so doing, give them more energy, purpose, and direction. Instead of just limping along, our education system might just start running again. More than anybody else, our children are likely to be more susceptible to infection than anybody else, because they learn more by watching us than by listening to us. If we drink and smoke too much and beat our spouses, they are likely to do the same. If we dream a lot and aspire for greatness, so will our children and their children. And how fantastic will our future be if, instead of smoking tick, nyaope, and other such habit-forming substances, our young could be driven by dreams of greatness. Why don't we join the muscle that digs a hole to get the minerals out of the ground with our brains to catapult our country into a modern and prosperous one that will be able to hold its own among other nations of the world? Boring? If the boredom induces sleep that in turn gets us to dream, let's have more boredom and therefore great dreams. Not all our dreams will amount to anything. Indeed, many will remain just that, dreams. But a dream is to inject purpose and energy to our lives. Thank you, and good luck to our new graduates. <laughs>